Welcome to the All You Need 7 Day to Better Health program. And today we're looking at exercise and the benefits of exercise. And this is just an incredible, it's just incredible. I've done quite a lot of research for this, uh, for this session, for this little talk for you. And uh, excuse me for looking at my notes. I don't, I often like to do talks without the benefit of having to look at notes, but there's just so much information that I've found. I'm sorry, I haven't been able to commit it all to memory. Now I've been teaching yoga for 25 years, so I have a, a great professional interest in the benefits of exercise. And I've seen the thousands of people that I've taught yoga to, the benefit that they've had. And in my own life, I've seen enormous benefits from my own practice of not just yoga, but, but so many other forms of exercise. But it's like the magic pill. It's, it's if you could bottle up what exercise does for people and, and patent it and market it. I mean, they would be, they would be, and it would be, uh, they'd be mandating it. But that's not the case. And obviously what we've got in the Western world is we've got growing um, obesity and even in countries like America, falling death rates. What's going on? What can we do about it? Well, exercise is a big one. Exercise is a big one and it's free. You know, we can all do we can all do something. We can all go for a walk. We can all do some stretching. We can all do some uh, push-ups. We can all do some simple exercises. So some simple yoga. Some you can learn some tai chi. We can all do something. We'll do some gardening. Go for a jog. Do do dance. It's, we can all do it, and it's so massive. The benefits of it are so massive, I tell you. So should we get into it? Get into some of the benefits, and then look at some of the mechanics of what you can actually do. Um, so, exercise, we often relate to the body and how it's going to help the body, but the benefits to the brain are enormous. And there's a fantastic TED talk by a neuroscientist, which all about how exercise benefits the brain. I mean, it's just... It's just absolutely huge. But on a, on a very basic level, it benefits brain health and our memory. It improves the, uh, increases the size of the cortex and the hypothalamus, and it improves the blood flow into the brain. It will also help uh, combat symptoms of depression and anxiety. And in fact, it's one of the best ways to do this. It's one of the best ways to enhance our mental well-being is actually to do some exercise and to do some regular exercise to, for our benefit, for our mental health. So we don't often think of it in those terms, but we really should. It's absolutely massive for, for our mental health, but also for our brain function and for the development of the brain for the young and also for improving that elasticity of the brain, improving that uh, the blood flow, the working of the brain, uh, how the brain works, our memory, our ability to concentrate. So just huge for the brain. So exercise increases the mitochondria in the cells. So this is almost like the fuel. It's how we can get more energy in every one of the cells. Now studies show that after six to eight weeks, this can increase by 50%. Imagine your energy, imagine the, 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 your like, power station in every cell. Imagine you can increase that by 50%. Well, you can if you do six to eight weeks of regular exercise. How about that? Now, that will Im uh, improve our endurance and our overall energy levels. Who doesn't want that? Like I said, imagine this was a, imagine this was a, a, a pharma product that they were like marketing. And giving it everyone to do it, wouldn't they? Improve your energy by 50%. Wow. So that's just incredible. Okay, let's talk about heart health. This is a massive one. Obviously, when you when you're exercising, you're you're getting that you're getting that heart working, you're improving the function of the heart and it increases the size of the heart, the size of the veins, improves aerobic capacity and also your lung health. It improves the oxygenation of the blood and it strengthens the diaphragm. So uh, studies have shown an incredible reduction in um, cardiovascular disease. And one study that I saw showed um, uh, heart deaths reduced by 31%, uh, which is 
amazing absolutely uh, incredible okay it helps manage your weight now it might not be the major factor in losing weight there are other factors um, nutrition is a big one that we looked at yesterday and also our our mental health how we're sleeping all of these things but it is a major factor in in managing weight and we have a an epidemic of obesity in the West so regular exercise is really just affects your metabolism it really does help to you know get yourself in a good way which which is which is again benefits overall health and improves longevity incredible it helps strengthen the bones and the skeletal system it helps remove pain and especially pain in the lower back now this is something that i've certainly found myself in recent times it improves muscle strength well of course it improves your muscle strength that's pretty obvious and flexibility who doesn't want that now you might say well, why do i want to be strong what's the point well everyday tasks i mean opening a opening a jar you know uh, doing some gardening uh, doing some hoop dusting some hoovering everything that we do every day can be enhanced i mean wiping our bottom i remember a a friend of mine taught pilates and she taught it to old old people and she said i want to give them the dignity of being able to wipe their own bottom and that's a massive thing you know i, I I'm, I'm not joking about this this is an incredible thing so every day pass and of course it improves our balance which is massive so massive you know people are all doddering fall over and hip fractures and broken bones when they're old particularly and it improves our posture which again is helping to align all of our organs correctly benefiting our overall health this is incredibly massive it improves our sleep i mean who's found that you know you've had a good workout you've done some good exercise ah oh, you've gone for a long walk maybe a cycle ride whatever it is ah oh, and you sleep well it helps us cope with stress again these mental aspects if you've got a lot going on exercise is one of the best ways to help get you focused and and leave behind whatever it is and then you can return to it in a better frame of mind it even improves our libido and can spark up our sex life which kind of makes sense doesn't it if everything's working properly and you're stronger and your hormonal system is in better condition it improves the health of the skin often people have said to me wow you've got great skin thank you very much i say but the skin is an organ and it's reflective of of the inner so if you're working on the inner it's going to help the outer that's uh, obvious isn't it and as i say it promotes longevity uh, there's various studies on this but one that i saw said that it will uh, reduce your risk of certain types of cancer by 25% dying of certain types of cancer and um, all cause mortality in one um, randomized trial reduced by 27% which is incredible and uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier the, the heart deaths by 31% that can be incredible um, now exercise can be fun this is one of the things as well where people don't exercise oh i don't do that that can be so joyful so amazing for you and also something that can be done that can be socially bonding uh, such as things like the park run which is a wonderful uh, institution here in um, england where it's free and people run on a sunday morning in a park and connects people together i mean i find this when i go to the gym you know it's got that that connection and and when i was teaching yoga a lot the connections that people had that social bond of exercising together or a dance class whatever it might be a cycling club rowing club rugby club football all of these things are incredibly socially bonding which is a, a massive part of it as well isn't it such a big part of it obviously you can exercise on your own but it can also be something that can bring you into that collective again and what a benefit that can be boost your confidence massive confidence is massive for our life how we see ourselves our self-image and what we then reflect out to the world 
I mentioned briefly about the endocrine glands. Um, now, different exercises will work in different ways, of course, but from my experience of yoga, it's, it's something that directly works on all of your endocrine glands, which are the producers of our hormones. And this is fundamental. They're, they're like switches. They're, they're, they're um, operators of our body processes and regulators of body processes. So if you want to have a sense of well-being, if you want to have a sense of health, of vigour, of vitality, then we need to balance our endocrine glands and our hormonal health, and exercise can help that absolutely incredibly. It improves our digestion, our gut health, and our immunity, because uh, so much of our immune system relates to the gut, and also the gut linked to the brain again. So improving our digestion, uh, re removing problems such as constipation, and helping to get that gut health healthy again. It builds up our antioxidant reserves. Amazing, I mean obviously we get antioxidants from food but we're also generating them ourselves and exercise is helping to build those reserves of antioxidants to help us cope with the free radical damage which, lead, which leads to um, age, signs of aging and illness as well. It lowers our blood pressure if you've got high blood pressure, exercise, moderate exercise is a wonderful way to regulate that. It regulates our cholesterol. And also it helps to control our glycemic index and glycemic indicators for diabetics. So for uh, type 2 diabetes, exercise is very important. Regular exercise is very important to help maintain and even reverse this condition. How about that? We're spending in the UK 100... Is it... Uh, 10% of the budget of the NHS is on diabetes. So it's, it's, you know, billions, billions a year. And type 2 diabetes is reversible with uh, nutrition and exercise. We've got to take control of these things. It improves the quality of life for those with Parkinson's disease. It can help um, reduce symptoms of dementia and prevent dementia. It improves muscle power and mobility for people with MS. It helps improve symptoms of chronic fatigue and it lowers the risk and prevention of arthritis as well. As I mentioned, certain types of cancer and um, many other health conditions as well. I mean, what? Just my exercise? Why, why isn't this being shouted out from the rooftops? Why aren't gym memberships, you know, free for people or, or reduced, subsidised by the government? Why isn't there a yoga class in every town and village? It's a community yoga that people can access for free. Prevention is better than cure. And exercise has got to be one of the best things we can do. Okay, so that's a little bit on the benefits. Now, what should we actually be doing? What's the amount that we should be doing? Well, uh, the medics recommend 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? 150 is a big number, but split that into five, and that's half an hour, five times a week. Okay, it's 30 minutes, five times a week. Now, what is moderate exercise? Well, that said, where your heart rate is going to be between about 110 and 140, so it's not, you know, you're not going all out crazy. That could be walking, you know, gentle walking, you know, you know, uh, gentle cycling, maybe under 10 miles an hour, um, gardening. Even household tasks like, you know, hoovering, you're using exercise doing that, dancing, swimming. We're looking at something that is, you know, like a nice thing to do. Anyone can do it. It might be like chair exercises. If, you've got, if you're uh, disabled or you can't get out of the chair, there's things you can do. And that we're talking about moderate exercise. Now, the benefits will really, you, you might get a, a short-term benefit from doing it. You might feel that short-term of energy. Um, and if you start exercise, what can often happen, they call it DOMS afterwards, the side effects. Delayed onset muscle soreness. You ever had that? Maybe you've done a bit of a workout, you're going to, ooh, you feel sore afterwards. And that can last up to 72 hours. But once you then get back on the horse, so to speak, you do the exercise again, gently, moderately, building things up gradually. Don't, you know, don't go mad with things. 
then you can overcome this muscle soreness and then get a lot uh, stronger. So you'll start to feel a lot of benefits after six to eight weeks. Okay, so this is something, if you're gonna start exercise, you, you can't just say, oh, I'm gonna do it for a week or something, you know. Give it some time and find something that you enjoy. That's a massive key for this. It's, it's, it shouldn't be a punishment, it shouldn't be a chore. Oh, I've got to do my exercise. Make it joyful. Think about those benefits, think about the why. As we talked about in our mindset, why do I wanna do this? I mean, if I haven't explained why by all of these benefits, but maybe you can find more as well. Now, this is another thing that in my research I found, that larger benefits will come after six months. So if you're doing something regularly, maybe, okay, I'm gonna to go to the gym, I'm gonna to go to a yoga class, I'm gonna go for a walk, you know, I'm going to do this, and it, we're trying to do moderate exercise five times a week for half an hour, okay? And surely you can work that into your day. I mean, we all can. We can all work that into our day. Every one of us can. But this is, this is a, a, a key time here, because 50% of people, half the people have given up by then. Don't you be that person, all right? because the benefits will get even stronger. And if you can keep going after six months, the research shows you're much more likely than just to stick to it and make it part of your life. As yoga has been part of my life for um, so many years, you know, over 25 years. After one year of exercise, regular exercise, you'll find that your bone density becomes stronger. And this is a, a, a incredibly important for us, for our health, of course, to help prevent conditions such as osteoporosis. So stick with it, that's what I would say. So in terms of the type of exercise, this is obviously dependent on you and dependent on your lifestyle and your age and your level of fitness and mobility, etc. But one of the things that has come to my um, awareness is the importance, as I now, I'm uh, 48, is the importance of um, strength training. And it's often associated with the young, you know, you're gonna pump iron and all of these things. But actually, it's so important to prevent uh, the, the wasting away of the muscles as you get older. It's very important. So it's recommended that you do two days of strength training uh, for bone density and to prevent muscle loss as you get older. And um, when I'm in the gym, you often see, you know, these old people, they're not banging out heavy weights, but they're just doing some, they're just doing that weight resistance. You don't need uh, to go to the gym for this. There are fantastic exercises that you can do. Uh, as in the description below, you will see that we've got a video from All You Need's Jonathan Woolard who's a kettlebell instructor and he does some of his fantastic warm-ups and also the well-being exercises which are a nice gentle warm-up exercises so you don't need to join the gym to do strength training there are fantastic exercises that you can do with no equipment whatsoever but this this it, it's a very important aspect so you you might look at two days of strength training and then three days of cardio cardio is where you're doing something to get your your heart going, so it might be walking, it might be cycling, it might be swimming, it might be dancing, etc. cetera. Well, you're getting that heart rate up a little bit to get these incredible benefits. Now, little disclaimer here, okay? Obviously, if you have any health problems whatsoever, or you're pregnant, see your doctor before starting any form of exercise. That's just sensible, isn't it? And certainly, um, what I've got written here, if moderate exercise is causing you chest pain, if you go out of breath too soon, if you've got heart or lung issues, if you're over 45 years of age, if you feel dizzy or if you're pregnant, definitely consult your doctor and say, will this be suitable for me? Because we wanna make sure that whatever we're doing is gonna be for our very best and not causing us any harm. So I hope that has inspired you to get into some exercise. I'm gonna be doing it today. Did a little bit of yoga this morning, did a little bit of push-ups this morning. I'll probably go to the gym later on this evening because I've got a busy day. I'll be out working, so I'll be doing certainly more than my, uh, my 30 minutes today. But I really want you to be inspired to do this as well. Make it part of your life, don't give up. 
the benefits will come six to eight weeks you'll start to feel more of a benefit and that six just do something that's fun make it fun if you need to buddy up with someone you know if you need to join a join a club join a cycling club or a rowing club or or join a gym you know do a class do pilates or body balance or jazzercise or whatever it is right find what works for you chair exercises are a wonderful thing for people who are, have, are less mobile or elderly find something and do it all right find something and do it and be the best version of you that you can be be the best version of you you can be for your family think of the massive reduction of the strain on the nhs we we, we bring about if more people are exercising wonderful 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 well thank you all so much signing out from all you need superfoods have a fantastic day